In this video, I wanted to show you two projects from every month from the year 2021. I hope this gives you inspiration for projects that you can make throughout the year. So uh, let's just get right into today's video. I am uh, loving these MDF snowflakes from Dollar Tree. Um, I like them just brown like this. I was just gonna do something really simple. I bought a few, but then I decided to just like fully make one over. So I'm just taking my white linen chalk paint from Rust-Oleum and I'm taking my chippy brush and I'm just kind of lightly dusting it on, giving it a, a rustic snowy look. And then you'll see the little piece of wood off to the right there and that is those wood planks from Dollar Tree. So once I get all the little snowiness, rusticness here on the snowflake, I'm gonna paint that plank um, completely white. Then I'm gonna go to my Cricut and I'm just going to cut an image. I did find it in Cricut Design Space and I will print that out on some brown vinyl. Add it to this little plank here and just glue it down with some embellishments and that's it for this project. I really think it accents um, all my little winter decor very well. I take some of my twine and just wrap it around the edges here. Um, I just think that gives it an extra, extra rustic look. <laughs> so I'll just wrap that around before I glue this down. I also just want to mention that I'm over on Instagram. I love Instagram. There's so many good ideas and stuff over there. I hope you'll join me. My name over there is dollar underscore underscore mom so make sure you get those two underscores over there i share uh, my i share all these projects i share some um, how i decorate other budget friendly things you can get to know me personal by watching my stories so if you are on instagram uh, come and find me okay so this year i found this um ribbon it's in the regular ribbon section at hobby lobby and it's just such a fun, it's just a fun texture. It's $7.99, so of course you can get it for 50% off. You can see there is a ton of it. This will probably last me a lifetime because I can't see myself using a lot of it. Um, if you saw one of my Christmas DIYs, I actually covered a little wooden tree with it and it just made a really neat texture. And so I'm just going to kind of put that behind um, my little other ribbon here. Um, if you saw one of my other projects there, you also saw that I use this ribbon. It's also one of my favorites. So when Easter comes back around, which will be here before you know it, I'm going to have to get another roll of this because I really like it. And you know the stores get stuff so, so way before the holiday that it'll probably be there in January. <laughs> so I'm just going to bunch this together and tie it with a little piece of the jute twine. I will add this down, and then I have these really cute little snowy um, pine cones, little mini pine cones that are from Dollar Tree, and I will just add those down to my sign, and that will complete the sign.
I'm using this Let It Snow wood sign from Dollar Tree and I'm just going to paint it with this blue paint. And there you go, you see that? And then of course I just painted the snowflake white. And I'm just going to dip my brush into my white chalk paint here and I'm just going to tap it so that I get, you know, like a little bit of a snow flurry effect. So, of course, when I start filming this voiceover, my dog decides to start playing with her new toy. So, anyhow, I hope that you guys had a really good Christmas. I did. Of course, my dog did, apparently, because she loves her new toy. All right. So, again, I'm just putting some snow flurries here. I may use this little sign here, also from Dollar Tree, and I'm just going to cover it in white chalk paint. Again, the same one I just used. I'm going to go ahead and get this all measured up on here on this little sign and I will glue it down. So basically what I'm making here is a lit up sign and I just I absolutely love how this one turned out. So again I'm just going to glue it and if you want to make sure that it's really good and adhered I'd put some little bit of E6000 or super glue on it as well. But so far so good this is sticking really well. And I was a little bit bummed that I didn't have the LED lights that have a white string. So if you can find those, that would be better. Um, I do believe I picked these little lights up at Rite Aid. Um, Dollar Tree does carry something similar. I don't think the strand is as long. But anyhow, so what I'm going to do here is I'm hiding all of the wire behind the lettering. And then I'm taking um, the little bit of the bulb that and then that's what you're gonna see uh past the wood i hope that that makes sense and i did use hot glue i've actually thought hot glue might not be a good idea but i've seen a lot of diyers use hot glue and so i thought you know what i think that's going to be my best bet otherwise you could use like a lot of tape um to tape it down maybe uh, that would be another option if you're worried about the hot glue, but it's working just fine. So I'm guessing the hot glue um, didn't hurt it at all because it is just the plastic part that I'm hot gluing down. But as you can see, I'm just hiding all the little wires here, and you'll see that just the little light bulb is what peeks out from behind. I'm going to go ahead and do that all the way around, and then this project's complete. That little sign the base sign there is absolutely perfect. You could see the little um, battery pack fits there perfectly. For this project, I'm going to use this sign from Dollar Tree as well as this card. I love the front, and then when I opened inside, I loved that cursive Happy Valentine's. So I'm just going to pop off this um, hashtag part. And I'm going to kind of deconstruct this sign. I picked up this shadow box off Facebook Marketplace, which is one of my favorite places to buy items. Um, a lot of people just want to get rid of stuff, but they want a little bit of money for it. And so I got two of these. One is um, a lot bigger than this one. And I think I paid $10 for both of them. And so I'm just going to open this up and I'm going to design here on this backboard. And it's covered in like a linen fabric. And what I decide to do with this at the end is just to Velcro this piece down so that I can change it out per season. Um, I ended up just flipping the heart over because you're not going to see the other side anyway. And you can find these type of shadow boxes at Michael's. They're on sale all the time, or you can use a coupon. I'm going to just cut this card up. Um, I'm cutting out the Happy Valentine's Day for this project, and then I will set aside the front for another project. I often get asked about this paper cutter. You can find them anywhere. All craft stores carry them. Um, Amazon carries them. So they're just a great tool to have uh, for your crafting. Mm -hmm. 
I picked up these doily hearts from Target. Um, Dollar Tree does carry something similar. And I'm just going to kind of play around here now with my layout. I don't end up using the white one in the end, uh, but I have to play around and see what works. These grapevine hearts that Dollar Tree put out this year are amazing. And I will use them again in the next project, but oh, I just love them. And then you'll see off to the side there, I have this little felt heart that I picked up at the 99 cent store, as well as this wood round that I ordered off Amazon. Um, they're really inexpensive and they just add so much texture to a project. And as you can see, this project is really like a mixed media. Um, I just really wanted to um, do something that's just has a lot of elements like these paper clips I picked up in the Target dollar spot for Christmas and then I never used them and they have several clips there that will be totally usable for any other holiday and so I'm just going to start um, adhering down some of these elements and then as you can see at the bottom there I added I'm going to add some letters wood letters and I picked these up also off Amazon, and it comes in a cute little box as you saw there a minute ago. And oh my gosh, I'm in love with these little letters. And it comes with a bunch, so don't worry, I will link those down below. I'm definitely something to add to your stash. And like I said, I'm just gonna start adhering some of these elements down and moving pieces around until I get the look I'm going for. It. I also get asked about that little glue that you see up at the top corner. It's just Elmer's glue in a little mini um, tube that I got from Dollar Tree. And it's so nice that it's just small. Now I'm just taking some ribbons from my stash, a little bit of this raffia, and I'm just gonna add it underneath this clip here and just kind of pull it, make it kind of like in an X, just giving this some texture up here. And I wanna take a minute here just to tell you guys how I got so inspired by this and it's by my friend Linda over at Faith Chick Design and she is just so amazing with adding you know a bunch of different elements to her projects and I'm just over the moon for them and so this is actually a collab with her and I will share her page here after this project. I'm also feeling that 2021 is the year to use stuff that I have. I have been collecting scrapbook and craft supplies for a good 15 years and I definitely have plenty. Um, I could quarantine the whole year and be totally fine. Um, so I know it might be a little frustrating to see items um, that you don't have, but just go in your stash, you know, just pick a little pieces here and there and then just kind of play with their placement and see what you come up with. That is what was so fun about this project is just pulling little items out, um, seeing if they work, seeing if they don't. Um, as you can see here, I just put that little heart on the wood round, put my little saying back up there. And I love this ribbon that um, Dollar Tree has that says, I picked you. Some of their ribbons are so cute, but they're really hard to use because if you tie them in a bow, you can't really read them. And so I was able to use it here where you can see it. And this is just a little cardboard heart that was in my stash. You can cut one of these out yourself, no problem. Um, but again, just using what I have. So originally I was going to put that white heart underneath, but it just didn't work. So I grabbed this wood heart from Dollar Tree. Um, oh, those hearts are so good. Uh, they just work for so many things. I just like the natural wood of it. I'm keeping this kind of more neutral. And as you saw, I was measuring. I just wanted to make sure that my project was going to fit inside the shadow box. And I'm just using this foam tape also from Dollar Tree. It's just going to raise it up enough to fit over the heart that you see there. And I'm going to need to do it double so that it fits.
So just continue to keep in mind that if you are doing something like this and want to be able to switch it out, don't glue it to the back. So you're just gluing it all as one piece. So my heart is my main piece, the big one there. And as you can see, I can just move it around. And I added that cute little bow to my grapevine heart. So now you see that I'm just using some double stick um, Velcro and this will just Velcro it right on. Now it's time to put it inside the frame and this is my favorite project I think I've ever made. I just am, I'm just so in love with it. So many elements, um, I can change it out. I hope this project inspired you and did not intimidate you. It's just really fun to grab some things out of your stash and just play. For this project, I'm going to use some more of those grapevine hearts, one of these little crates, some wooden dowels from Dollar Tree, and then I will also use some of the antique wax from Waverly, which is my favorite. I don't want to deal with stain, and so I'll use that. I'm going to need a little one of these foams, as well as some grass to put inside my little wooden box. This love chipboard is again from my stash, I'm trying to use up some stuff, but here you can see, you can use one of these um, metal letters from Dollar Tree. Um, you can use some stickers, there's all sorts of options. So as you can see, this antique wax is so easy to put on um, and it lasts forever because you just really don't have to put much on. And when I cut my floral foam, I leave the plastic on it. It just helps keep things cleaner. But then I felt like it was too high, and so then I had to cut it down, and then the plastic came off. But if you don't have to do that, it's kind of nice. It keeps, you know, the foam from going everywhere. Okay, so now I'm going to attach the dowels to the grapevine wreaths, and I just use like a lot of hot glue. And you're gonna think, oh, it's a little messy, but don't worry, I find a way to cover that uh, later on here. But um, once I put this on, I realize that the stick is gonna, you know, kind of fall and, and make it, you know, like pop off. So what I do is I just grab this box of pins that I had nearby to uh, balance that stick on so that it can be straight. And then once I glue this on, now I'm going to add some more hot glue over the top just to give it that extra adhering. Like I said, I'm going to finish the backs here. I'm going to add a little more glue and then I'm just going to take some of this Spanish moss and put it over that. And this way it'll look good from both sides as well. And I just trim it down so it's not too crazy. And I just think that worked out really nice. It looks nice. And then I'm just going to start putting them into my foam box there and I'll make them different sizes so that they, you know, look good together. Thank you. 
glue down the foam here and then I will glue some more on top of the foam and add the Spanish moss and that Oh, nope, I was gonna say it's complete, but then I do add a little bit of, a little bow to each of the hearts. For this project, I'm going to use this unfinished wood piece from Dollar Tree, as well as this fabric also from Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to take a piece of printer paper and I'm going to trace out the hearts that you see here um, on our shamrock. And then I will cut that out and then I will trace that onto the fabric. And then I will paint the um, shamrock there uh, Kelly Green. Then I cut out this little truck from some of the Dollar Tree uh, clings, and I will also take one of the wood planks that I painted white, and that'll, I will put that truck on there with some Mod Podge. And before I do that, I'm just Mod Podging on the fabric hearts as well, and once I get everything Mod Podge down, I will attach it, and this project will be complete. You'll see here that I'm just kind of pulling with my fingernails there around the heart, and that's just to kind of give it a little fringe and just give it a little bit more of a rustic look.
like how the top of the truck there had a little bit of hangover, so I just added a piece of white cardstock just to get that to stand up and stand out. And I just add it to the shamrock, and like I said, that is it with this project. This is a very simple DIY and I feel like this is one of those less is more. It's just very simple. So I take the little shamrocks from that pack and I'm going to cover them in the fabric from Dollar Tree. Now this is an old sign. I actually had something on here. It was a Valentine's sign. I didn't love it so I just took the stuff off of this sign and you can see it left. It took up some of the paint. And I liked how that looked. So now I'm just going to go around and give it more of that. I'm just scraping off some of the paint here and just giving it that rustic look. And then I'll take some of the um, sandpaper and sand it as well. And you know I gotta use my ladybug vacuum to get all the debris and dust up. And now I'm going to write the word um, charm and then above that lucky. And don't stick the stickers all the way down until you're sure where you want them to be placed. Because even though I thought I had the A centered, because the M is such a big letter, it did not look right, so I was able to fix it. And now I'm going to glue the fabric onto the shamrocks. You can use Mod Podge. Um, this Elmer's glue works too. Okay, so now I'm going to take some twine and I'm just going to slightly put it down because I don't want it to be like a straight line. And then I'm going to glue the shamrocks down so they look just kind of like they're hanging. And then I will just put that um, twine, I'll wrap it around the back. And then this project is done. I wanted to keep it simple. I shouldn't say it's done. I am going to um, sand over the letters some because I don't want them to be super shiny and so give it a little more rustic look and i didn't finish the back of the sign because i will uh, flip it over and do something else with it my, my seasonal signs i like to make double-sided if possible and so i won't finish this so that i can do that at a later time For this first project, I deconstructed this bunny um, basket 
um, I didn't show that part because I actually deconstructed it last year and then never got around to making something with it. But as you can see, um, it was just a plain canvas-y, I shouldn't say canvas, it was like more like a felt. And then this coffee sign, also from Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to pop this off and you actually don't need to do this part. This is one of those projects that evolved as I made it. I was going to um, write something there and then like I said it just evolved and I ended up covering it so you really don't need to do that part. And so I am just going to um, put this part of the bunny on the half circle. So I'll go ahead and I will uh, mark that out and then cut it and adhere it to um, the top circle part. And this fabric is so cute because it's double sided and it's really thick and um, it's just too cute. It's too cute. And I love the basket, but I didn't have a need, you know, for a basket, a little bunny basket. And so this is a perfect way to get this cuteness of this bunny. Um, into a piece of decor. And as you can see now I'm marking it to cut um, to fit just the half circle and then I will attach that. And then the ears are already made so I can attach those as well. And this is where I say it evolves because I am going to um, I decide that I really love this pink polka dot, so I'm going to go ahead and make a strip of that um, go across that first part that I was originally going to write something. Um, I thought I might paint it and, you know, put a cute thing, but I ended up liking this a lot better. So again, I just mark it and <laughs> I did this the hard way. I always do things the hard way first. You really could have just measured like this and then just measured and made a long rectangle, but I did it the hard way. <laughs> and then I will attach this. The ears probably would have stood up by themselves, but I want to give them that extra support. So I'm just using a skewer here and gluing to the back of the ears. If you don't want this part to show, you could put another piece of the felt behind it to finish it off. And now I decide that I just need a little bit more, so I'm just going to cut out half circles, two of them, and that's going to be the bunny's paws. And I just feel like it's kind of um, looking over a ledge, and it's got its little paws um, holding on. And then I just, with my pen, draw a little, um, kind of what would you call it, little toes, little markings, so it looks a little bit more like a paw. And then I um, glue it all down. And this project's done. It's so adorable. I love that it sits. Um, just, I think it's the cutest thing. What do you guys think of this one? There's just so many, um, like I said, if you want, you could do a little saying there um, at the bottom, but that's, that's it. In this project, I'm using this egg sign from Dollar Tree as well as this cute, cute bunny fabric also from Dollar Tree and these eggs, ornaments, and metal letters also from Dollar Tree. <laughs> and then I'm gonna use some of this scrapbook paper and some wrapping paper. So if you don't have printed paper and you wanna do a one-stop shop at Dollar Tree, look in their wrapping paper or their tissue section um, they have some beautiful prints, even um, their gift bags, too, you can use. And so here is another really pretty wrapping paper that I found as well. It's just perfect for spring. Also, you can see there, I was going to finish the back of this egg sign. In fact, I do finish it, but I didn't need to because in the end, I end up adding it to a sign. Okay, so I'm going to take this fabric and these papers and I'm going to go ahead and adhere them 
down onto the eggs. And uh, the metal letters I painted with white chalk paint. So I'm going to go ahead and just hot glue these down onto my big egg. And that tulip you see down in the bottom, that was just a cardboard cutout from my scrapbook stash. You could cut your own if you'd like. I just am trying to use up some stuff. And I just painted it with my paint markers. And so I'm just going to adhere um, all of this down. I'm using my Sherbonder Lin Lily glue gun. This is the fine tip. I have been using just the big one and I've switched over to this fine tip one and I really like it as well. I'm not gonna lie, I kinda want them both plugged in at the same time because sometimes I have big things I wanna put down. But I'm noticing it's helping a lot for these smaller pieces. Now because I have raised parts on the left hand of the egg there, when I glue down, these other items, they're going to be kind of funky. So what I'm going to do is use this uh, adhesive uh, foam mounting tape and it's double stick and it's thicker so that you can raise up your image and you might need to do one or two layers. And as I put the welcome bunny, I will also do that on the right sides. So I'll show you here close up how I did that. I'm going to make this a double-sided sign. I bought this at Target and it has these little flip signs and I want to say it came with four Christmas boards. And you know I don't need four Christmas boards <laughs> double-sided. So I'm making one for each holiday. And so as you could see there, I had my Valentine's one and now I'm flipping it over to make one for Easter. And so I just need some background paper and I'm going to use this pink gingham. My friend sent me this inspiration and I knew I had to make it. So I put out on Facebook, does anyone have a spare tire? Like hopefully like a like motorcycle size and a friend came through, said they had one. And so perfect. I picked up this like, I don't know what they call these, like a garden, like to hang a planter, a hanging planter piece. I don't know. So now I put this up on my fence beam here and um, just drilled it in with my cordless drill and it's a little um, loose so I just take a hand screwdriver just to tighten it up here off camera. And then here is my used motorcycle tire. 
that would have just gone to waste. So I'm using it in this project. So you just hang it on here just like so. And then I grabbed this little planter from Joann's last year on clearance for around two to three dollars. But I see these everywhere and that's about the average price. Um, and so I just love the pink polka dots. So I used a pool noodle here, one that I just had left over in my stash, and I cut it down to fit inside the tire. And I'll use this like floral foam and it fits perfect down in there because of course it's pool noodle right down in there. And so then I'm just going to take some floral stems that I picked up from Dollar Tree and I'm just going to start cutting them down and adding them down in here. So if you look in the inspiration piece, it was actual flowers. They put dirt in there and actual flowers, which is amazing, but I have a black thumb. And so growing real flowers is just not gonna happen. So I am just going to use some faux flowers in here and I can change them out when they fade with the season. And that's it. That is all there is to this project. It cost me $1 for the pool noodle, $3 for the flowers, and another 2 to $3 for that uh, watering can, which I'm not sure exactly how much I paid for it. So around $6, $7 for this project. And here's another inspiration piece that I found in a catalog, and I thought it was super cute. So I picked this shovel up from one of those like vintage craft type stores for $3. And then I went on my Cricut in Design Space and I found this pre-made um, image that I cut out on my Cricut. And I will go ahead and I will put that down onto the shovel there. And it says bloom and grow. And then I will just take my flowers and I will wire those down to the handle and add a bow. And that's it for this project, super easy again. I think it just looks super cute in my yard. And in total, this one cost me around $5. Is there an easier way to make this bow? Probably. I'm terrible at making big fluffy bows, so I'm really good at making small ones, but the big fluffy ones not so good at. So this is kind of my little cheat method, but I know there's much better ways. Also, originally I wanted to do this video more into the springtime, although technically it is still spring. But, you know, time kids, all that, and I just now got to it this week, and it was 108 this week in Northern California. It was terrible, and so I had recorded this particular project a little while back, but the rest of the projects are kind of recorded differently than you may see here. That is because my craft studio could not get the higher weight lower than 82 degrees and most of the time it was around 90 degrees it was way too hot so I'm kind of taking I take some pictures and I did some stuff outside and yeah it was miserably hot but I'm really 
glad I finally was able to get to these projects because they make my backyard look so cute. So anyhow, you're going to see me sweat. You're going to see things a little different because I just couldn't get that studio cooled down. So a new fan came today. I'm really hoping I can cool it down in there. So it is not attached to my house. It's attached to my house, but it's not attached to the inside of my house. And so it doesn't have air conditioning. So fingers crossed that I can record in there for the rest of the summer because it was super hot. All right, so back to this project. I'm just adding the bow and then we'll put it in the yard and we'll be ready to go. These are my favorite types of projects. This is where I just grab a bunch of stuff and then I just start creating. I don't know how it's going to end up looking. I just start. And so I've got all of this lemon um, colors and, and pieces and I'm just going to start layering them. So I'm using this Christmas tag from Dollar Tree and I'm going to cover this part right here in their wrapping paper and that's just going to give me a finished backing. And then I'm going to take some scrapbook paper um, that I've picked up here and there and I'm trying to remember where I got this lemon paper and it's either Michael's or Joanne's. And I remember I got it during quarantine last year and I did the curbside pickup so I'm pretty sure it was Joanne's. I hope. Anyhow. I'll see if I can find it and link it for you. But that's how I start out, is I always start out with some sort of paper. And this is double-sided paper, and so I'm gonna use the lemon side for the bottom half of the tag, and then flip it over, because I have two sheets of it, and then the green polka dots will be the top of the tag. I just don't know, I just don't know if I'll dance with the lights on. If you're gonna be moving on solo, wait a second, cause they're playing the best song. I'll be there if you reach out to me. Now I'm going to paint this little wood piece that I picked up in this kit you see on to the left there from Dollar Tree. And I'm using my paint markers and these are my absolute favorite. I got them from Walmart and I will link them below. It's so much easier than actually painting. And then I'm using my white pen here also, which works perfect because these are very tiny little areas that I'm trying to get white. This is the best white pen um, that I found. I got it on Amazon and I will also link that below. And the lemon that you see up above is from Joann's. They always have the cutest little wood shapes um, for the seasons and they're always on sale. And I picked that up actually on clearance because that's what I do. I love the clearances. So I'm going to just paint this again with the marker. And because I want white to show through where um, you see it cut out, I'm going to cut out a white piece of paper circle and I'm going to adhere it behind. Then wants to show you my intention My brain gets blocked at times but now Somehow I'll give you my attention You got to know that I I ain't a person who understands All the clockwork of a romance I 
Again, I am not totally sure where this is going to end up. I had this piece of buffalo check paper that was left over from another project and I thought it would look really cute on here. So then I went into my scrapbook stash and I found these two pattern papers that matched perfectly and so I'm going to use them as backgrounds. So instead of doing a traditional mat, I'm going to do an off-centered one. So I'm going to cut these, the green and the yellow, the same size, but they're only going to go into the corners. When you, I, you probably didn't see there, but when I flipped over that yellow, it's actually pizzas. It's really cute paper. Um, and so I couldn't believe how perfect these colors went. I of course, love paper and I have tons of it. So as you see there, I um, just did it one, one corner and one on the other. Now I'm going to use some washi tape and I'm going to put this over um, where the two papers met on the original tag and it just kind of gets that seam met up. And this, again, washi tape that I bought years ago and I've actually never used and I'm finally using it. Okay, so my camera died and I lost some footage. So all I did was I um, used this little tape runner and it looks like stitching. And so I ran that across the side here. And then at the top, I just distressed the yellow. So I'm just gonna show you here on the back of the paper. Also, I have no idea where these sparkles came from. Somehow some sparkly filter got on. So yeah, I don't know how that happened, but it's kind of fun, isn't it? Okay, so I'm taking this sign from Thanksgiving from Dollar Tree, and I just tore off one of the squares and painted it with white chalk paint from Rust-Oleum in linen. And then I cut out um, this fresh squeezed on my Cricut, and I used two fonts that are both called Bailey um, that I got off defont.com. So I'm just going to add that now to this um, little tag. And because I like things to look even, I'm going to use my ruler here just to make sure that it is all positioned well. Okay, so now it's time for me to glue on here with my double-sided tape runner to put this paper down in the middle. Okay, and then I'm going to use my hot glue gun because this is a little heavier, and I'm going to also glue that down. Okay, I'm really digging this little sparkly thing. I don't know what I did to make it a filter on it, but anyhow. So now I'm going to use some of my um, foam tape because I am putting it on the raised part that says fresh squeezed. So I need my foam tape to be on the opposite side so that it lays flat. I'm just adding the two little lemons. I'm loving how the sign turned out. So I got these straws from Dollar General they had yellow, green, and blue, and then they have the cute little lemons on them. But I started to think I really like the texture and the, the like stripes of the straw, so I just cut it in four pieces, and I'm just gluing it down over here in this corner. Something about it, I love the texture, and so that's what I'm gluing here. And I liked the little lemon that was glued to it, but the yellow was like neon, and it didn't go with this project. So I'll set it aside because I'm definitely going to do more lemon projects. I will have another lemon video coming out soon as well. So if you like this one, I will definitely be having more. Okay, so I'm going to use some more of this washi tape. If you don't know what washi tape is, it's like, it's almost like post-it note sticky. Like you, it can come off. It's really great if you need to tape something down but you don't want to like ruin your paper but it's also decorative so you can make cards with it um, you can just it's it's really a neat versatile thing so I you saw there I just um, folded it over and stuck itself and then I dovetailed the tips there so I'm just kind of making like a little almost like a ribbon um, accent and I, then I am using some actual ribbon there in between. And I'm going to use another one of those buttons that I used in a previous project. And now it's almost complete. It just needs a ribbon at the top. And I have this beautiful um, striped yellow ribbon that I got from Michaels. 
again on clearance. I just love the pattern of it. I'm going to glue that to the top and this project will be done. It was so much fun to make. I just love pulling out a bunch of items and seeing what I can come up with. This is another simple sign makeover. I'm using this home sign from Dollar Tree and I paint it white as you see here. I just took the, I didn't make you watch me paint it white, but that's all I did was paint it white. And then I cut this lemonade word out on my Cricut and the font is Bailey and I got it from defont.com. So I'll go ahead and I will stick this final shape down. This is my current favorite font. Um, I got it from Christina at Christina Elizabeth um, Crafts if you haven't checked her out. Go check her out. She um, has this font she uses and I'm like, where is that font from? I need it. And so free on defont com and it's called Bailey and I'll link that down below and even though so I've been a Cricut user you guys like literally since it came out and it came out in like 2003 but I always use it with paper and so I'm just now getting a little bit better with the vinyl but I still not gonna lie I struggle a little bit and I think it's because I'm so used to it cutting out paper and then me just like gluing paper down so anyhow so I'm just going to get this nice and straight. And the way I did it is because it has those two grooves, I lined the bottom of my E-loops. So that's how I knew it was straight. So there's a little tip for you if you can use um, the lines already on the sign. And as per usual, you see my big blonde mom bun in this shot because I have to lean over to make sure everything looks even. So I'm going to go ahead and press that down and peel it off. And then you'll see up in the corner there, I have my Sharpie marker. And that's because I wanna make a border around this sign. And I debated doing it in vinyl, and I'm glad I did it because I think it was much easier doing it with the Sharpie marker. So I grabbed my metal ruler. Oh, here, yeah, mine, I don't know why, but my M folded over for some weird reason, so I'm fixing that right here. Okay, so sometimes I measure, sometimes I don't. I felt like this one, I was close enough to be able to eyeball it. But I did go one inch from each side and draw my line. And so, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a cute little half circle on the corners. So I will go ahead and, like I said, I'm going to do an inch from each corner. And then just a half circle. See how easy that is? It gives it that kind of ticket look. And there you go, see, super easy. And now I wanted to make it look a little more distressed, so I'm gonna take some of my Rust-Oleum white chalk paint that I painted this originally in, and I will use just my little dry brush to go over it a little bit. Okay, so now I'm going to take this stem from Joann's, and again, I bought this on clearance last year. You're going to find that I buy a lot of stuff on clearance. But anyhow, um, I love it. If you saw my last video, I used it in that video as well. Okay, and then I will just attach it down to the sign. I do need to cut it a little bit because the stem is a little bit too long. But the nice thing about this is I can glue each little piece into place so that it looks great. So each leaf, each lemon, and these lemons are not hollow. They're a little bit more dense. So I have to make sure it's glued on really well because I don't want it to fall off. And the last step is just adding a little bow. I think it's necessary to cover up where the glue is. So this is just some white and black ribbon that I also got from Michaels. 
in their Christmas clearance and I really like it. It's definitely not seasonal and I always look for non-seasonal items in seasonal clearances. I hope that makes sense. So like there'll be burlap and Easter and and Christmas and it I mean it, they'll heavily discount it because it has a Christmas label. So if you're walking past that seasonal decor clearance, don't walk past it. Walk into it. See if there's something you can use that's non-seasonal or maybe something that you can easily paint over and make something fabulous out of. And I do that a lot. That is how I get a lot of the things that I make over. And that's it for this project. As you can see, it's very simple, but it's such a classy looking sign. I just love it. In this project, I'm going to use one of these signs from Dollar Tree, and I'm going to go ahead and sand off all of this glitter. After I do that, I realize that I have one of the plane trucks in my stash, and it's going to be so much easier just to paint that. So I'm going to go ahead and use the plane truck. So those are your options if you don't have a plane truck. I'm going to use Waverly in Crimson and this other folk art in Cascade. I kind of wanted to do a little bit different of a blue for this. And I'm going to take some of my wood filler and fill in these two um, holes that used to be a sign. And I'll go ahead and I will paint this. And I'm just gonna fast forward so you don't need to watch me paint the whole thing. But I end up using that red and blue and then some copper. Then I went on my Cricut and I cut out with some white vinyl some fireworks. And I'm just going to put these right down onto this um, cardstock paper to make my fireworks. And this is a good option if you don't have colored vinyl. It may, basically gives you so many options. And once I get those stuck down onto my paper, I'll go ahead and cut around them. And I end up making three more. I wanted some bigger ones. I kind of missed the size that I was going to do because I, I think I wanted three or four inches and I ended up doing like two. So I'm going to cut a bunch of these out and then I will add them into the back of my truck because what I'm going to do here is make a um, cute sign that says Liberty Farms Fireworks. And I have had this huge chalk circle here in my stuff for, I don't know, at least a year, if not more. And it's 18 inches and it's from Chalk Couture and they had this big clearance sale. I bought like three of them and I haven't done anything with them. And what's so great is I can flip this over and make a sign for another holiday. So anyhow, I go ahead and I'm trying to line everything up and I just measure there just to make sure that everything looks like it's going to fit and be into place. And the way that I designed this is I put an 18 inch circle in Cricut Design Space so that I knew my words were going to fit perfectly. So I'll go ahead and I will flip it upside down because I feel like it's easier to match it. Um, at the top and so just make sure you have your words going the right way okay and so once I get that on I can go ahead and start adding all of my elements onto this um, big sign what I love about this sign is it's huge it and it's such a like statement piece I just I'm really really excited with how this one turned out Okay, so now I'm going to just set my car down and I'm not gluing it down yet because I want to make sure my fireworks fit here into the back. And so I will go ahead and I will glue those down where I'll stick them down with some double stick tape. And then I'm going to, on some of them, use the foam tape, the thick tape, so that they pop out a little more and get a little more dimension. And once I get all of my fireworks in, then I can glue my truck down. And I just do that by using some hot glue. And 
then I thought it would be fun to say that this farm was established in 1776. That would be an old fireworks <laughs> company, but you know, you know why I use 1776. And then I also um, cut out some stars um, to add to the sides. And when I put that in design space, what I had done is just flipped it so that the other side would match, but would also be rounded in the correct way. That's pretty much it after gluing everything down. And then I had these cute little um, star beads that you see up in the right hand corner. And I picked those up, they're all stars. It's silver, gold, and copper. And I went ahead and grabbed one of the copper ones out and glued it to the truck there. And, um, and when this was done, you can use that burlap that you see off to the side to hang it. At the time, I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do there, but you can see the slot at the top for your ribbon. And this is how it turned out. I love it so much. It's kind of a bummer that you can't really grasp the size, but it's so great. I wanted to make some wood firecrackers, so I went into my wood scraps and I found this wood. Not sure what it was used for. Um, I pick up wood scraps off Facebook Marketplace for super cheap. But they already had holes in the top and I had planned on drilling holes in the top so it was like a super win. So I'm going to keep one the length that it was already in and then I'm going to cut the other two down. I want three different heights. And so I'm going to just use my miter saw here and then just cut them down a little bit. I hope as you see me using power tools more and more you will also feel like you can do that do use them? Yes, that's what I want to say that. <laughs> use them. Um, it is a little intimidating, but really it's not hard. And um, I'm really excited to have something like this, especially because I'm not very strong and it's hard for me to saw um, just with a regular little saw. And that was super fast and easy. So now that I have my three little shapes there, I will sand them a little bit where I cut. And then I'm going to use some paint and some scrapbook paper and make some little firecrackers. And so these are the prints I picked up. They are very, very, very old out of my scrapbook stash. And then I'm gonna use these paints. This is the Waverly and Crimson. And then the blue is called Midnight Blue. And I think it's folk art, I'm not sure. And then uh, Waverly and Ivory. And so I will cut the paper out and paint and voila, there you go. <laughs> They're all painted and cut the strips of paper out. Now because the paper is like really distressed, which I love, I'm going to take some of my Waverly Antique Wax and I'm going to um, also kind of distress the firecrackers. And on some spots where I may have gotten it a little dark, I just take my paper towel and I wipe it off and it just gives it that rustic look and it's not as bright red so it matches more with the scrapbook paper. And once I get them distressed how I like, I will just use some Mod Podge and put the scrap of paper on the fronts of these firecrackers. Now I'm going to take my sanding block and I'm going to give these a really good sanding. I want it to be distressed, no paper hanging over, um, just yeah, really rustic. 
Okay, now I just cut out a little piece of the like jute twine and I'm going to take a little bit of hot glue and I will put it down into this little hole. Now these holes were really deep, so if I had drilled them myself, I wouldn't have drilled them very deep and then I would have just put the glue down in the hole, but I was afraid it would like go way down and then be pointless. So I get my little um, wick there into my firecracker. And then I'm going to put all three of my firecrackers together and, oh, first I want to tell you about this free printable that Heidi Sambol um, designed and I will link it down below. Um, super cute. I went ahead and printed it on transparency paper and then cut one of the tags out. I was looking for cardstock to put in my printer and I found this transparency paper and I thought, yeah, I bet we won't ever use this and so I was like "Ooh, I'm gonna print some stuff on it and start using it I like the idea of it being clear so anyhow that's how I'm making that tag and I just cut out some brown cardstock to go behind it I'm gonna take my jute twine and I'm gonna go around three times in my firecrackers here and then I'll just tie a couple knots I will add my tag and then I'm gonna use some of the little star beads that are from Dollar Tree. They have gold, copper, silver, and I'll just add one of those to the little tag. And that's it, I have the cutest little firecrackers here. This would look so cute on a tear tray or just as a little filler um, in your patriotic decor. I'm really happy with how it turned out. And I pretty much used stuff that I had scraps in, in my supplies, so it definitely didn't cost me a whole lot. For this project, I opened Design Space again and I chose confetti sprinkles to use as my uh, font. And I just cut out these words with the white vinyl. And here's where I just used it right on the mat because I didn't have any of their smart vinyl. So I used my regular vinyl, cut it down to size, and used their little mini mat that you see there on the left. And so I cut out the words, life is better by the pool. Now, because I didn't have the smart vinyl, I um, did have to cut this out in um, little pieces because I could only fit four letters on the mat. So no problem, I just cut each one out that way. And now I'm taking these trays from Dollar Tree. As soon as I saw them, I knew I was gonna make a sign. Uh, because I love the colors and so these are just their little trays um, and all I'm doing See, I'm just putting the vinyl right down on the tray And what's great about this is I can put it outside and it will be waterproof because when I make regular signs You know with cardboard or anything like that. They're going to get ruined by the elements And so once I get all of them on I will put them up and down like this and look at how pretty those colors are for um, my backyard. And then I have this um, ribbon here. I believe it's from Michael's. It might be Joanne's. But anyhow, I'm going to use it. And I picked yellow because I thought it was a good complementary color for my summer sign here. So I'm just rolling out, trying to decide how much of the ribbon I need. And then I am going to flip this over and I'm going to glue it down on the back. So I'm going to use E6000 as well as just a little bit of hot glue for the temporary hold. You definitely don't want to use just hot glue because this will be sitting out in the summer sun and it will melt and your sign will fall apart. So definitely use the E6000 or something of that nature, super glue, Gorilla glue, something of that nature. Now it has these little, as you can see, these little um, L's. What makes it super easy to line up my ribbon so all of my ribbon will be exactly in the same place on each sign. So that was a little uh, extra bonus. So I'm just going to go up one side and down the other and that's it and the sign will be done. I could have added bows or different things but I just felt like this should be a fun simple, si simple sign <laughs> to put out by my pool.
I picked up these signs from um, Dollar Tree. They're super cute on their own, but they really don't fit into any of my decor. So this is going to be perfect. And then I picked up these stickers at Hobby Lobby. They're normally $4.99 and I got them half off. So they were $2.50. <laughs> so I'm popping out the middle here onto the sign and I will go ahead and just kind of tear up tear off this front layer and I'm going to cover it so it doesn't have to be super smooth or anything like that and so I'm going to do that with each of these signs. Now I went to my printer and I went on and I just printed out um, some words that I typed out in this I used a couple different fonts and then I just printed it out onto cardstock and I'll simply just take my glue stick and glue it onto the front of this. And then once I get that all centered and looking good, I'll take some hot glue here and then put it around the inside. And you want to make sure it's very thin layer because you don't want it to squish out. And then I'll put the little saying back inside the frame. Now, if you can't find this exact frame, Dollar Tree has so many cute little frames like this that it shouldn't be too much trouble to find something similar. And so then once I get that all in there, this is where the stickers come in. And I actually kind of forgot to uh, measure the stickers in a little bit, but my plan was to put the ice creams on each side there, and it ended up turning out really cute. And then for the other sign, I did it off screen, so you didn't have to watch me do the same thing again. And I just typed out Kennedy Family Creamery and added one of the stickers. This dupe is definitely my favorite. The Kirkland sign is a 12 by 12 and I am able to also make a 12 by 12. So I'm gonna use this canvas that I have um, in my stash, but I just looked it up on Michaels cause I usually buy them in bulk and it's $12.99 for seven of them. So it comes out to be with tax around $2 a piece for one of these canvases. So what I'm going to do is kind of do a reverse canvas here. So I'm going to take the canvas off and I just do that by cutting um, around the staples. Now you can pull all the staples out if you like, but that is way too much work for me. And I think swear words might happen if I try to do it that way. And this way works just fine. So I will go ahead and I will peel um, the canvas away and we will be using this. So I will set it aside. Before I start painting this project, I'm going to put some of my catch surface down. It's a re reusable um, surface that you can paint and it just collects the paint and scraps and whatever. And then I just put it back down onto its backing when I'm done with it. And love, love, love this thing. It just, you know, keeps the paint off my desk. So now I'm going to paint both the frame and the pumpkin and I'm going to use um, some actually some old paint I think it's oh I forget apple barrel folk I don't remember what brand it's just cheap Walmart paint for probably 75 cents I'm just going to um, squirt a little bit in here with some water and so that it will look more like a stain and then I will just wipe the excess off and I think it makes a really neat look
Okay, I'm going to you do the reverse vinyl method once again. And these fonts are, uh, for the cursive, they're, um, sorry, I forgot what I said. Oh, hello. <laughs> hello, it's, the text is Brickley Script. And then for the fall, it's just Arial, just good old Arial. So I will go ahead and put this down. Now here is probably the hardest part but not really that hard, is when I'm painting over this, I'm not painting the whole pumpkin. I'm just going to paint the outline of the pumpkin. So I take one of my flat, um, straight brushes here, and I'm going to slowly go around um, the edge of the pumpkin. Now, of course, I speed it up for you, but I really took my time in going around so that I would, was leaving that wood border. So once I get my outline, I will paint over the whole inner portion. While that is drying, I'm going to go over here now and work with the canvas. So I'm using some washi tape um, that I have in my stash, but Dollar Tree does sell it. And what's great about washi tape is it comes up really easily, but it also helps get you those straight lines. So I went ahead and I measured this out, and I think it was like about an inch in from the where I cut it, and I put a piece of washi tape. Now I put another piece right next to it, and then I'm putting a third strip next to it. And then what I will do is I'll peel up that middle strip. Now I have a um, perfect, you know, uh, measurement there of my stripe. Now in the Kirkland's one, it was three stripes, and mine is only going to be two. And that's just because I think I used a thicker tape. So anyhow, I end up liking how it looks. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tape all of this down. So I will have two stripes, big space, two stripes, big space, two stripes. And then once I get all my washi tape down, I'm going to go ahead and use elephant chalk paint to fill in those stripes.
once I peel up the tape, I'm just going to take my little nail file here and I'm just going to kind of distress just a little bit to give it that extra rusty, rusticness. And now that my background is complete, I'm going to come over here and work on my pumpkin. So I, my Rust-Oleum paint is kind of getting to its end. It's getting kind of thick. I need a new can. So it, it was thick and it didn't go on super smooth. So I'm kind of just running my piece of sandpaper over it just to kind of smooth the paint out because it kind of, you could see some brush strokes and it was bugging me. <laughs> so now is the fun part again, peeling up the um, final and revealing that wood look underneath. And now it's just a matter of assembling everything. So I put my pumpkin down on the background, kind of check out where it all is going to lay. And first things first is I'm going to actually get that canvas onto the back of this frame again. And so I will um, hold it taut and use my staple gun and add you know, that to the back of the frame. And real quick here, I'm just doing a quick gray, it's like a gray denimish bow that I will add on to the pumpkin at the end. And that's it, just putting it all together and this is complete. I love this sign. It's just so different. I love the colors in it. So it's definitely one of my favorite dupes I've done. I was able to make this for around $4 and Kirkland's wanted $34.99 for theirs. This is a super simple project. I took this tin here from Dollar Tree and it said flowers and garden on both sides. So I scraped it off uh, one side. Um, what I found out is my ribbon was actually thick enough. It would have covered it and I didn't really need to scrape it off but I didn't know that at the time. So I'm just taking some of this buffalo print um, ribbon from Dollar Tree as well and go ahead and glue it around. Now when you have um, a circular thing that's where it's wider at one point and smaller at another, the ribbon does kind of sit funny so you will have to kind of do like a nip tuck um, in the back so that you don't have like this funky <laughs> um, wrinkle. So you see here I have to pinch the fabric and this is in the back and that just makes it so everything is nice and smooth. So I'll go ahead and put this down and then I will 
at the Red Ribbon. And the Red Ribbon was in my stash. I'm not really sure where it's from. And once I get that completed, I will add another bow. And then you see the apples up to the right of the screen there. That bag of apples was from the Target dollar spot, and it was for $3. So I think that was a really good deal for $3. And I like that they're different sizes. It makes it easier to make an arrangement. And then I'm using some of the Spanish moss from Dollar Tree. Now, I'd already used some out of this bag, so if you had a full bag, it would be better. And then I'm just taking... Um, a Dollar Tree baggie just to fill up the bottom so I don't have to waste a bunch of this. So again, it would take an entire bag and I only had this much left. So you will still see some of the um, paper bag, plastic bag um, through that, but again, you'll be able to cover it with a full bag. Okay, now I'm going to take one of these chalk tags from Dollar Tree and I'm going to add some of these cute little tiny wood apples and a friend of mine actually sells wood cutouts and I'm going to link her down below. She does sell it through a Facebook group and it's really affordable. I want to say this whole bag cost me a dollar and I just color them with my um, chalk markers and this white pen pen that I got off Amazon is amazing. It's the best white pen I've ever used and I've been using them for a long time. So I'll also link that one down below. You can see how well it writes and it's just a, a nice stark white and I'm just writing apples 25 cents per pound and then I will glue on my little apples to the bottom and add the tag to my apple arrangement and that is it. Super simple and I think it adds such a cute element to my vignette. All right, I'm taking this sign from Dollar Tree and I'm going to go ahead and take it all apart, take this top off. I'm going to be using this side of the sign, so I wanted to make sure I got all the staples and everything out and nice. And so I'm going to use my little heat gun tool here, which is linked in the description. It just helps get those tags off easily, those stickers off easily. Now because this has kind of this 3D little wood piece, I want to take that off as well. And I did finish off the back with um, some contact paper from Dollar Tree. Now I'm just using black paint from Folk Art and covering this um, side of the sign. Now I was originally going to cut a piece of wood in this exact shape and then I was looking and I thought, oh, I actually had that shape already because what we're going to do is we're gonna flip it upside down and we are gonna make a black Halloween cat. I was so excited when I saw this sign because I just, it was accidentally upside down in my stash and I went, oh, that's the exact shape I need. And I thought that is amazing. So I just took my Cricut and I made a tall rectangle and then just cut it diagonally. And that's how I made the inner parts of this ear. Um, easily paint this, um, I just, Thought, hey, I'm already cutting out something on my Cricut. I might as well just make the ears as well. Now, this came, this idea um, came from something I saw in a boutique. Um, it was, you know, a thick piece of wood. Like I said, I was going to cut a piece of wood to make this and it would stand up on its own. But when I saw the shape, 
and I knew it was something you guys could use because you wouldn't have to cut wood. So I went ahead and did it this way. I'm also trying to use my contact paper over and over, or my transfer, you know. It makes it go a lot longer the way. Okay, so I just used three different fonts. Um, and off the top of my head, I do not know the fonts at the moment, so I will um, link them down below when I find them. But I just used three different fonts, and it says Scaredy Cats Welcome. I love mixing fonts. That's always been something I like to do, and I just think it gives it, you know, extra, I don't know, eye candy. <laughs> So this project is super easy to make and it doesn't even matter what fonts I used. You can just go in and play with fonts that you you have or and always remember and you can um, go to defont.com and get whatever font you like. Okay, so I'm just going to take my twine and this is going to be my whisker. So I'm just going to kind of make it as thick as I want. How many whiskers do I want? And then I'm going to just tie my twine around the middle and then I am going to wrap it a few times so that it's nice and thick in the middle. And then I'll cut off the ends and that will make my whiskers. The last thing I have to do is just put the eyes on and that's it. And I just went into design space and typed in cat eye and that's those popped right up. So super easy project and I think it turned out super cute. For this one, I'm taking the house frame from Dollar Tree, and I just took it apart and I traced around a piece of scrapbook paper, and that is what that shiplap is. And then I cut this out on my Cricut, and I will put it down onto the paper. Now, if you don't have a Cricut, this is a super easy because all you could do is just print it off your printer and then cut the paper to size. So. I just happen to like the shiplap look and so I am just putting um, the vinyl on top of that. And then I'm just going to, um, oh I forgot to mention, I painted the frame of the house black and I just used um, I Waverly black paint, it might have a fancy name but it's just the black. And then um, I'll put all of this back together and I'm going to just sand a little bit of the a house frame just to give it a little bit more of a rustic look and that's it just a really cute farmhouse looking sign and then I'll add a little um, buffalo check bow and that's it just a quick and easy project In today's video, I am going to use this gorgeous paper pack. It is called Hello Autumn, and it is from Echo Park, and it is so pretty. I actually got it last year, and I didn't get around to using it, and I could not wait to use it. And so I'm going to use, on all these home decor product projects today, I'm going to use 
this paper. It's so cute. It's so farmhouse. I love that it has the aqua blue in it because that is a color that I intersperse with my fall. So it is so pretty. I will have a link for you to order this pack yourself. And I will also be giving away one of these packs. So stay tuned throughout the video because I will tell you at some point how to enter to win it. And there's just so many elements. Some of the papers have, you know, cards you can cut out. As you can see on that first page, it's stickers. <gasps> Again, it's just beautiful. They do have another one out um, for this year that's just as cute. Okay, so for this project, I'm going to take this little um, box from Dollar Tree. And I saw another DIYer heat this up and then it takes the paper off. And so it worked on this front piece of paper like a charm, but it didn't work on the back piece, but that's no problem because I'm covering it anyway. But I wanted to show you um, how that worked. Now I didn't mind the round part, but it wasn't gonna be tall enough. So I'm going to use um, one of the little square um, planks that Dollar Tree sells, and that's just gonna give me a little more height. And as you can see, I'm going to glue it right here. I've pre-cut my paper, so you didn't have to watch me cut it, and I will just use my tape runner here to adhere it onto the little wood plank. Now, I'm not sure why my video is a little jumpy. Um, I will say that I just went on vacation into the woods and I was editing these on my phone, so maybe they saved funny. Anyhow, you saw me use my little ladybug vacuum, which is great when I am sanding or have these little pieces I need to pick up. Now this is a distressing tool. It works kind of like if you were to use the edges of your scissors, but I find that I don't um, accidentally cut chunks out of my paper. And so it's really old. I will try to link something similar um, if this company still doesn't make one. So I will link something below. And so you can see I'm just distressing the edges I like to give it that extra texture. And then again, I'm just layering these papers. As you can see, they're double-sided. There's so many options. I decide that my um, plank here just needs a little extra, so I'm taking my brown uh, little chalk pad here, an ink pad, and I'm just going to um, brush it around. If you don't have this, you can just use paint and a chip brush, and that will work just as well. I'm going to go ahead and add um, the cute little sentiment here. And as you can see, that little pumpkin's 25 cents. Um, I can't remember if that was a... Yeah, that was actually one of the papers that I cut out, not a sticker. And then I'll go ahead and um, I cut a little piece of paper just to go inside to cover um, the... I don't know what you want to call it, the image, but you won't, you don't really see it anyway. And then I've cut a couple of papers here for the front of the box and um, the little orange um, piece you see up there with the tags, I mean, with the trees. Um, it says something like, I'm so thankful for Octobers. And I just think it's so cute. If you don't have a tape runner, you can use double stick tape. Um, you can just use your regular glue. You can Mod Podge it on as well. Again, I'm gonna distress um, this little piece of paper to give it um, that same look that I did on the upper piece. And now I'm going to use one of these little hay bales from Dollar Tree, and it fits right in there. Uh, i got to push it down a little bit. Now, in order for it to not, like, shed everywhere, I took some of their spray glue, and I just sprayed it over the top, and it just kind of made it so it won't, you know, get hay everywhere. And then I got one of these stems, also from Dollar Tree, as well as those cream pumpkins at the top. Those are also from Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to take them and arrange them there on the hay bale and glue them down with a hot glue gun.
and that's it for this project and I just think it turned out so stinking cute. Uh, my pumpkins there didn't have little tops, so I just kind of stole them from somewhere else. But look how cute this is, just adding some paper. And I just, oh my gosh, I just love how this turned out. For this project, I'm going to use one of these big pumpkin signs from Dollar Tree, as well again as some more from this kit. Now this is a little bit more of an advanced project and so if it's not up your alley you can skip ahead to the more simple ones that start at the 14 minute mark. But this is my absolute favorite project that I made in this and I'm just showing you how you can add paper and elements to a project and just make a gorgeous piece of art home decor. So I cut out my um, paper that I want to be in the background and I've chosen this plaid paper and then I'm just going to start cutting out some elements. I pick um, one of these cards here and I look, like I said, I love this aqua color and I'm just going to start cutting pieces of paper and this is my method. I don't always have an idea of how this is going to look. I just start cutting pieces of paper and laying them down and just arranging them and just till I see what I like. And so I knew this one I just kind of wanted to have an off-center um, mat and then I knew that I wanted to have a strip that went across the pumpkin and so I just start working there. I pull into your driveway, it's a Saturday night You look like a million bucks wearing that dress I like You're smiling but there's something missing in your eyes Girl, I can tell that you have something on your mind But I will make you forget all your sorrow And here I decide that I really don't want my, um, piece of paper here to cover the entire pumpkin. So I just do about a quarter of an inch. I just freehand around. And since the background of this pumpkin is that perfect orange color, that will now be my border. And I like it much better. There's no tomorrow. Let's have a drink. Just relax. All your problems will fade. If you're ready for a good time, count on there's a party in the backyard, dance your problems away. I'm all about the good vibes. I know you're all about the good vibes. Do you know how much I love you? Want to see you smile? Where's the happy girl that I know with your heart on fire? I picked up these embellishments last year in the Target dollar spot. And oh my gosh, it was all these wood words for a dollar. And then this little burlap leaf is also from Dollar Tree. So now I'm just going to go through and start distressing my pieces of paper again. And I'm just going to start layering elements. Now with stickers, what I do is I cut the stickers out so that way I can kind of place them around until I decide where I like them and then I can stick them down. So that way, like I said, I can play around. And I'm going to use some of my foam tape from Dollar Tree as well. And I'm just going to pop up several elements. And this just gives it more dimension and more texture. So I'm just going to let you watch now as I play around with the elements. And tell me what you think of a project like this. Would you recreate it? Let's have a 
vibes. I know you're all about the good vibes. We are all about the good, the good vibes. We are all about the good, the good times. Dance until it feels alright. All night. We're all about the good vibes. All about the good vibes. down, facing the law, the summer night has just begun, the moon is bright, let's have some fun, oh, this is everything, with you right next to me. So alive and tonight I'm thinking that I don't wanna go Wanna go Calling sick in the morning, baby don't leave They don't need to know we're out here Say we're crazy, it's too much And yeah, we're crazy, deep in love Oh, oh this is everything With you right next to me This project is inspired by something I saw at a store and I'm blanking, but I think it was Hobby Lobby. <laughs> so I have this pumpkin, um, the small one here, this white one is from the 99 cent store. The regular wood looking one is from the Target dollar spot. And then of course this one right here is from Dollar Tree. So uh, all together it's $3 worth of pumpkins. So I'm just using my heat tool to remove this burlap um, piece off of the board. And then of course it leaves a lot of glitter, like so much glitter. So I will just take my sander and sand that down. And then over that piece, I'm gonna just use this contact paper from Dollar Tree. This has been what I've been doing lately to finish off the backs of projects. And I'm really loving it because it makes it super easy since it's already sticky and it usually has kind of a neutral background. So that is my little tip for you. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and cover this in white paint. It's linen from Rust-Oleum. And what is going to be so much fun is I'm going to add texture to this pumpkin. But first, I'm going to get the other two pumpkins ready as well. Now, I want to leave this. I like the natural wood, but of course it has this orange around the side. So I'm going to cover that up with the same paint. And again, this project is going to be very neutral. All of the projects in today's video are neutral. So got to get rid of that orange. And then I will, so I will cover the sides here and then I will also paint the other little pumpkin with the same white paint. Before I paint this little pumpkin, I'm going to put on some of these pearl dots. I'm going to put them all around the outside of this little pumpkin um, in my inspiration piece, which I know I have a picture of somewhere, and of course I can't find it now. So I actually made this project at least over a month ago, so <laughs> yeah, I don't know where I put it. So, but anyhow, it had like little raised dots around the pumpkins, and so this worked great and I've seen many creators do this as well. So I'm just going to, like I said, just make a border around this pumpkin and then I will cover it in the paint.
Okay, and this is where the fun starts. This is a new for me, but this is a template, a stencil from Dollar Tree, and you can see there's nine different um, designs. So I cut out the one that I wanted, and then I'm using some of their lightweight spackling, also from Dollar Tree, and I just use my fingers. Is there a better way? Maybe. This is the way I chose. I felt like I could really push it into the stencil, and so I do that, and then I just lift it up, and I go down to the next spot, and I keep doing that. It was really easy. It's messy, but easy. And then I just let it dry, and it made an amazing texture. And once I have all of those dried and complete, it's just time now to put them all together and add their bows. Now you can't see the texture really well here on camera, but as soon as I should finish the tutorial, hopefully you'll be able to see it in my pictures. Now this little um, grateful sign is just like this thankful one. They're both from Joann's. I got them for 49 cents, but I didn't want it to be a shiny, so I covered it in Mod Podge and then sprinkled it with cinnamon so that it would have kind of a galvanized um, coppery rustic look. <laughs> rusted, rusted look, not rustic, although I guess that's the same. So I'm just taking my hot glue and my E6000 and I am gluing these all together, adding the bows and adding the grateful and that is it. And it's just such a beautiful neutral piece. I am bummed because I just don't think the camera gives it justice. I was really excited to see these 3D kits from Dollar Tree. This is how they come. So first I'm going to take one of these little crates from Dollar Tree as well as that nativity scene from the last slide and I'm going to paint it in Waverly Antique Wax. And then I'm going to take seven of these domino pieces and paint them white. Once I have them all painted white, I take some of the antique wax and I just kind of distress the edge. And then with my Cricut, I added the numbers. You can use number stickers um, if you'd like to. Then I measured to get that hole right in the center and I punched it out with my Cropodial. And then I'm going to go through all of the other ones and mark them so I get them all in the same spot. And I will also, um, like I said, I used my Cropodile. If you don't have one of these, what is so great about them is they punch like butter. So if you have like arthritis in your hands or anything like that, it's super easy to punch with. Like I don't have a super strong hand, so I love that tool. Okay, so now that I have um, my pieces all painted and my numbers all down, I'm going to find out where on my crate that I want to um, hang these. Once I measure uh, where I want them to be, I'm going to hammer in two skinny nails um, that I also got from Dollar Tree. They come in these little kits. They have other little hanging um, pieces in there and other size nails as well. And now, originally, I had planned on using the opening of the crate um, and putting those little wood blocks in it to count down, but my Dollar Trees were all out of the little blocks and I actually, so I came up with this alternative and I actually like it better. So I think, and I think it was easier. And there you go. Now that's the nativity all put together. You can just 
add it down with some wood glue and that's it. And I think this turned out really good. Today's video is Hobby Lobby inspired. I actually was gonna treat myself to that sign and I'm glad I didn't because it was expensive and I was able to recreate it. So I'm starting with this 18 inch round chalkboard sign that I got from Chalk Couture, um, but I did check at Hobby Lobby and they had a circle sign this size and it just wasn't on sale so I didn't grab it and then I remembered I had this in my stash. So I've just, taped off here and I'm going to make, um, try to make this look like wood and I think I succeeded. So I'm using um, Waverly chalk paint in hazelnut and I'm gonna give it two to three coats right here. So again, so this sign I'm kind of doing it the opposite where I feel like the Hobby Lobby one was probably wood and then they painted it black. So. You'll, you can totally do that. Get a wood one and you're just gonna do the opposite. You're gonna um, tape it off and then you'll paint it black and leave the wood. And so I'm just gonna rub a little bit of um, Waverly Antique Wax with my chip brush just to give it that wood grain look. And then I went to my Cricut and I cut out Merry Christmas. The Christmas font is Cream Candy and the Merry font is Aldine 721BT. Now I'm just going to take this pick. This particular one is from Michaels. I got it in a grab bag like two years ago and I think it costs about 20 cents so it was a score. Um, so I'm just peeling off some of the um, stems there. I don't want to use the red berries. I just want to keep this really neutral and so I am just going to cut this down and adhere it down with um, hot glue. Before I do that, I do want to make the top of the ornament, and luckily Dollar Tree has come out now with these corrugated metal shapes. Um, so I'm using this one, it's kind of an oval. They have stars and squares and like just all these really cool shapes now. And I was like, this is perfect to go as the top of my um, ornament. So I'm going to use partially... Um, E6000 as well as hot glue. I want this to be really sturdy. So this video you're going to see is, like I said, it's all Hobby Lobby inspired, but also it's going to have a certain theme and that is what my theme is going to be this year. And that is black and white and wood and green. So that's my theme this year. I have done red buffalo check and buffalo check, um, the last and you know rustic the last two years so this year i wanted to kind of just change it up a little and i'm going to go more with the woodsy rustic theme so i'm still going to have white and black buffalo check but i will be getting rid of the reds and the red buffalo check um so i definitely need some new decor and so i am in love with how all these projects turned out because they will be all in my new decor this year so I'm going to go ahead and use this ribbon. This ribbon is my favorite. It comes out at Christmas. I've bought it the last two years because it works so good for farmhouse projects year-round. It's definitely not Christmas. 
um, it works for Christmas, but it works year round. So I'm just going to make two loops here. And this is kind of like my cheater bow. I just make two loops, then I cut um, the tails, and then I just um, adhere them all together with a zip tie. So I put the smaller loop on top of the big loop. I decide how long I want my tails, and then I just double that. That's how I make my bow, cheater bow. Um, this is kind of a hard thing to put a bow on because the um, greenery is kind of thick. Um, the sample, the, the inspiration does not have a bow, but I just, I wanted a bow. And that's why it's called an inspiration piece and not a dupe because I'm not making it exactly the same. So once I get that bow down, this project's done and it's a nice big statement piece. I absolutely love it and I hope you like it too.